Oh, right on time. We are right on time, my friends. Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to the stream, your number one painting, oil painting live stream on the internet. Welcome, my friends. All right. Checking with YouTube if we're live. YouTube, can you confirm? Are we live? Oh. Let's go. Yes. Let's go, my friends. Let's go. Let's freaking go, guys. All right. So today, I'm going to be painting. Still doing this painting. My god, it's... Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure you, you'll be bored to see this one like uh, I've been on this one for a long time but like in my defense I had to let it on the side for a while and now I'm taking it again after a like a couple months really like maybe more than six months I had to, you know, sometimes I put a project on the side, I work on something else, that's how life works. But I'm gonna continue, I'm gonna make, uh, today I'm building this huge kind of machine, barrel machine, so bear with me here. This is, I, I thought about it when I was inspired by uh, this, not, not the, uh, not this by this the barrel of the danaides uh and specifically this painting uh, kind of kind of made it click in my head that i wanted to work on this on this uh myth but with a sort of a modern twist so it's a modern take on this idea of uh, the the barrel of the danaides if you don't know about the story, let's have a little story time together. Story time. Danaus was the father of the Danaides. And the Danaides were 50 girls. So this guy, Danaus, had 50 daughters. So for all of you parents, you just imagine what it means to have 50 daughters in the morning when everybody is getting ready and needs to use the bathroom. Like, if you have one daughter, you just multiply the, the time by 50 and you get the idea. <laughs> so, uh, apparently, there was, like, in the, the myth, there was a, a marriage that was... Uh, in the books for her, but Danaus did not want his daughter to uh, be married to um, to Egyptus, his twin brother, Egyptus, a legendary king of Egypt. Apparently, I don't know the the entire or whole backstory, but and so and Egyptus had 50, uh, 50 sons and wanted to marry all the daughters of Danaus to his 50 sons and Danaus didn't want that so his daughters were the Danaides and that's they are here and during the wedding night they all uh, killed their husbands with um, with what? They used um, their um, hair, you know, like they have a pointy stick in their hair and they all kill their husbands except for one which was this one Hyper Hypermnestra, sorry if I'm mispronouncing who spared her husband Lincius because he respected her desire to remain a virgin so Danos was angered that his daughter refused to do as he orders and took her to the Argives courts and basically they all were condemned in hell to pour a liquid, so pour water in an empty vessel uh, or a barrel with a hole like this one and, and now it's very commonly used to symbolize um, 
like making a like a task that's very repetitive and that's kind of absurd it's it's uh, generally in in uh, an analogy of the absurd so that's what i'm going to be uh painting well that's what this entire um painting started with with all the characters here uh so but i want to make a a sort of um the the barrel i'm changing it into some sort of a machine uh because why not because i want to have a, a sort of a modern kind of sci-fi twist on it and that's what i'll be doing today i've been um i've been trying to make this out of imagination referring to several references i tried using ai but it doesn't like ai doesn't produce the kind of picture that i want but what ai had done like i used it i tried but it didn't give me this, so I had to recompose mostly in my head. But what AI really is good at is creating very interesting textures. Um, using AI for texture can be super, super interesting. You really get a lot of this metallic kind of, um, you know, textures. So that's what I'm going to be working on today. And like, really, like, there's nothing more simple than this uh, palette for the moment because I'm doing all the sort of silvery metal parts first and I'll be uh, moving on to the rest later. And uh, so that's the program for today. But we also uh, will we'll take a break at the one hour mark or maybe hour and a half and we'll check out the uh, art challenge and see what's going on. Uh, reminds me of Star Wars. Yeah, it feels kind of sci-fi-ish. Um, I wanted something kind of modern, but that really feels mechanical in a way. It's hard to explain what I, I, I struggled a lot to find the, you know, the right amount of, you know, modernism and, and also making it feel like a real, uh, sort of barrel. I'm going to work mostly on this side right now. So I'll maybe if I move on to this next side, I'll, I'll skip there. And I want to uh, work on this transition here between this lady. I want to change here. See, I had this big, this big um, side in here. So I want to work on this entire part, change this. And there's going to be a lot changing in this area. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to do the bottom here. And this is going to be sort of shining kind of red. So translucent, you'll see the water. And it's going to have this, this red glow that you actually see here on this character. So there's a red glow here. And the red glow is going to be um, is going to be shining from this area here. Mix some steam steampunk. Yeah, I thought about steampunk, but um, it wasn't really the vibe. I wanted something more kind of almost feels like a nuke in a way, <laughs> like a nuclear bomb, but doesn't. I didn't want to make it too cliche. I wanted to, I don't know. It's strange when you, but when you work from like mostly from imagination, that's how it is. Like it's strange. You have to not be afraid to dive into the strange and the weird because like you're trying to step on land that's not been, that's not been really um, walked on before. So, you know, that's uh, that's how you're supposed to go. Like hesitating when you're just making it up entirely from imagination. It's pretty um, pretty natural. So it's pretty normal. But you have to not be afraid of that. If you if you really want only realism, then you you can only use models. But when you make things from your imagination, 
at some point you're not going to have a model anymore or all the models will be you know uh, not not satisfying compared to what you actually need i've looked at you know um factories tons of pictures of factories checking out their machines i've looked at like tons of pictures of um oil rigs uh, oil pipes you know oil refinery systems of all sorts and i'm trying to combine this into something <laughs> and and we'll see how it works in the end we'll try try to make it work but you never know that's why i i got stuck for so long on this painting maybe i didn't know really how to proceed with this and then other projects came into the picture. So, yeah, exactly. Nuclear reactor, in a way, nuclear, or, you know, um, can find that it's. You'll have, like, basically, I'm gonna reveal to you the secret. Here, there is going to be some seedlings. In, inside of the inside of the red water sort of the red glow there's going to be some a couple of seedlings here inside and there's going to be electrical wires coming from below like going below almost like roots but the, I actually had a, a little note here in my little cheat sheet it it means it's in French. It's uh, electrical wires, like roots from plants. So yeah, I want to work on this this idea of a little black hole. Yeah, why not? Why not? I but the problem is I've already used um, the the black hole the black hole imagery a lot in my paintings. But yeah. Uh, might might uh, might work for this one I don't think it's it's the story the there's going to be a void though uh, below uh, it's not done yet so you, you don't see much and oh man it's all always so tricky to explain imagination <laughs> working from imagination when you, first of all it's not done and it doesn't necessarily make a whole lot of sense but you have to explain it somehow. It's always pretty tricky. I hope that I didn't use too much um, too much medium here. So yeah, but oh man. So what I'm gonna do? A little bit of music, please. Some of the fine arts cliche that I've cropped up so far this year. What, what do you mean? I don't understand the, the, the phrasing. Can you, can you just re rephrase? Uh, I, I don't get it. I'm sorry, my brain is maybe a bit slow after an entire day of uh, of working but actually i didn't have the time to work on the painting today because i was busy doing other stuff maybe that's what melted my brain my brain so can't uh, can't compute anymore <laughs> yeah, I like the idea of a cool name uh, on the machine. Reminds me of um, the South Park episode with Osimo, the, the robot. Like Cartman disguises himself as a robot called Osimo. 
I'm not telling you the rest of the of the episode. <laughs> oh my god. This show is so crazy. Oh man, I, I th I'm just realized I've let my brushes stand out there overnight and some of them have started to 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 become sticky that's that's not good that's not good yo So how is this? Maybe ooh. Oh. Oh definitely, yeah. Basically things that have been overused in in terms of uh, figurative drawing, to me it's giant heads. Like you know giant portraits especially of uh, celebrities stuff like that like when you don't know what to draw and you still want to make figurative you draw a giant face but that's kind of the worst the worst use of painting time like you have all this figurative talent and you're wasting it making giant faces for no good reason you know, and you make the, the giant faces with a big dripping texture for um, a fancy client with a big loft, I guess. Yeah, giant hyper realistic, but with like, oh my God, when you get, when you get closer, it doesn't, it looks like big patches of paint. But when you take a bit of distance, it looked like this huge port. Wow. It's like... Oh my god, yeah, it's very overused in my opinion. Wash with honey, water or plastic. How many figures are pouring liquid? Well, technically if I if I stick with the the myth, uh I should paint 50. But <laughs> first of all, I don't have the real estate on this. Uh, to paint 50 and yeah I, I think I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint um, so I've got three here my plan is to have th three four more and then the rest will be in the background more so you'll see just silhouettes here in the background sort of lining up to uh, to pour the the water or the liquid last time i i worked on this uh, on this project live there was this huge dilemma of or this huge questioning on what is this that they're uh, pouring in and, and frankly i don't know <laughs> frankly i don't know um Some people suggested gasoline. Some people suggested water. Since it's a machine, it can be um, connected to NG in a way. This is this should make sense, right? So gasoline would make sense because um, because it's it's all connected to. You know, energy, a machine uses energy or produces energy. Or no, I shouldn't say produce energy because nothing produces energy. Energy is just transformed. Nothing is created out of thin air, but you know what I mean, right? Oh man, I, I've thinned down some of my paint too much. 
And now I'm stuck with this. Ah. Yeah, I have no choice. I need to remake some. Diluted less. I wanted to, last time I did it, this paint was more sticky than expected, so I I thought that I might thin it down a bit more, but now it's too fluid. Man, consistency is is a B word, right? Uh, let me be polite. Consistency of the paint is never what you want. Never what you want, it's always something else. And it's a B word. But man, like I said in, in my recent video, it's like you can spend your entire career trying to figure it out and still you'll still have tons to learn at the very end. And your your very last painting of your career, before, right before you die, you'll still have tons of things to learn about how the paint consistency works. Ah, man. So right here, I wanted I wanted it to be a slightly less fluid than uh, than before, but now it's just too fluid. Now it's just too runny, and and it's uh, it it gets too translucent. Sometimes it's good, but here I I don't want it because what I want is. Uh, opacity here because I'm creating this metallic texture. Ah, I get why. I get why. Sometimes, you know, the sometimes the oil from the tube just um, uh, pours with with the paint, separates like that. So sometimes you get more oil, and. Um, I didn't notice, but here I see that my my burnt umber here is very almost drooling of <laughs> this oil, excess oil, and maybe that's what caused this uh, this difference in in consistency. I didn't expect. So I sorry, I have to mix again. You can switch to palette if you want, because it's probably going to take a bit of time. See, it's just I'm not um, I'm not wasting too much. It's just I need to bring more into the picture so that the medium is less present. And uh, yeah, so let's do that as well. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a gradient like that by just you know, look at what I'm doing here. I'm just um, very quickly creating a gradient out of all these. And you can start with just three of those, three colors like that. And by simply creating a gradient, out of the three, you'll have a an almost infinite number of nuances very easily like that. And you can pick anything from there. You can start with just white, black and, and middle gray or a local color of anything. It can be anything. It can be any color. It can be a yellow, a lemon yellow, a green or whatever, fire truck red. And you can mix that and create a sort of a, a very simple gradient. Very, very naturally blended like that. And there you go. It's super easy, super easy. The only thing is sometimes I still recommend that you, I, I, I'm mostly for the beginners, I recommend that you keep them separated because you want to know where you're at. Uh, a gradient is cool and all, but it can be easily confusing. So yeah, try to keep them separated if you're not comfortable with values. I've had tubes that were super dry and then at the end of the tube it, it broke into a big oil bubble. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, and they are super dry because all the oil is is stacking at the bottom or sometimes it's not necessarily the bottom, it's just a little bubble inside. There's like a I don't know, um 
I don't know how to how to say exactly how it's called. It's, there's a formation of oil stacking up at some point, forming a, a sort of a, a cave inside of your paint tube, and it's stuck inside. And when it gets out, it's like it oozes, just like um, well, just like digging for oil, actually. You know, petroleum oil in this case. Yeah. And I would Command like to say Studio Cam for 10 seconds. Hello. I would like to say that it's mostly coming from um readjust it here. Back so, to normal. Okay. Um I would like to say hey, it's just um bad quality, bad quality paint that works like that. Not necessarily though. It's sometimes good quality paint. Just temperature, pressure, the some some very weird stuff can make the paint behave this way. This guy is the next Bob Ross. Oh my god, I need to let my hair grow. But how do I get a hair like that? It's too bad, I, I just recently cut my hair. Uh, man, I need to let it grow again. A uh, wig. Bob actually had a wig? Is this true or are you trolling? Are you trolling? Hey dude, where are all the big juicy melons? Um, I don't know, they're growing right now. <laughs> Thank you for reminding, like and subscribe, everybody. Like and subscribe. Oh really? Like, hey, actually, if you want to, um, if you want to start uh, planting melons from the seed, it's starting up in in April, so you don't want to miss it. If you want to grow them in in your backyard, like, no kidding. I know you were not talking about that, but I'm talking about actual melons. And if you want to grow them, like, it's it's so easy, dude. Especially if you live in the south. If, if it's sunny and warm in the summer where you are, why not grow melons in your backyard? Hey, cucumbers, it's awesome. It's the same family as melons, so that's cool. I'm not growing uh, melons. Uh, last uh, last year, I tried growing uh, watermelon, but it was kind of tiny here because yeah, I I really need more sun. So this year, I'm growing way more squashes and stuff that are more you know better for my climate. The, the watermelon was actually very good, but it was just the size of a grapefruit. <laughs> but I, I planted it pretty late. I planted it in almost June, which is super late. You want to start April 15. Uh, if you can, April 15 should be the date 
so it stays one month in the container at least for my climate but uh you guys are from all over the place so i don't know about your your place but Strawberries again. Yeah, strawberries are awesome. You, you plant them once and then if the if slugs don't eat them, they they, they I like I like a, a a crop that takes care of itself. And strawberries they, they, they work on their own. Um modern still life will do later. I, I said we should make a, a break at the one hour mark and we'll do the modern still life then during the break. So coming up, coming up, art challenge, reveal, sort of. Yeah, potatoes, green potatoes is also very, very awesome. That's super cool. Very easy. Uh, what else? I'm growing uh, this year. Actually, I'm growing a lot of. Um, uh, I'm growing a lot of flowers that I intend to use as uh, props for for um, for my paintings. Actually, some seedlings that I'm growing myself are going to be placed here. So I'm growing them. I'm waiting for them to just reach this, uh, the, the, the right size. Oh yeah, growing your own flowers is um, definitely decent, especially what you want is to try, you know, some some stuff that you don't really see outside. That you don't really see outside of, uh, you know, conventional, uh, unconventional forests. Like some, some flowers here, what I'm going to use is amaranthi. And I mean, like, you can see that, like, some people grow them in their, um, in their yards, but I've never seen it anywhere else. And it's a, such a beautiful flower. Um, I'm waiting for them to, to be uh, big enough to show it to you guys. They're amazing plants. I'm going pretty slow. I'm sorry. I reached this point in just one day yesterday. I realize now that I'm, I'm moving very slowly. Uh, but it's, I'm so conscious about not uh, putting my face in the shot all the time. And it's still a lot of intricate details. So... Yeah, no problem. You'll see the replay. It's going to be on my channel. Make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell notification next time. Next time I'm live. Oh no, this is just for the love of art. Hello, Vigistan. Glad you're here. That's cool, man. That's cool. That's exactly what we're doing it. Why we are doing it. So that everybody can pick up a brush, feel motivated to paint. It starts today. It's 
your um, your next painting starts today and uh, sometimes you just need to see someone picking up a brush to you know find the inspiration to pick up yours and that's what we do that's what we do on the discord as well it's very active I'm unfortunately I've been less active myself but Man, the community is, is handling itself. There are people really um, helping each other, sharing. Such a cool community. Big shout out to um, Cody for bringing back the bringing back the the alive the live meetups so uh hangout sessions on discord coming back coming back uh actually this is the discord we'll, we'll see that later we'll see that later just hold on one event weekly art talk thursday at 9 p.m but i'll probably be late but don't worry, you'll have tons of interesting people to chat with. I'll be there, not all the time, sometimes I'll be there. And just click on interested. And that's it. And put that in your, uh, save the date. That's all you have to do. That's all you have to do. Be subscribed to this channel on YouTube. Be a member of the Discord and click on I'm interested. That's all you have to do and save the date. It's gonna be fun. Hello, Kitty Cat. Finally got back into oils. I've been using gouache mostly and soft pastels. I like soft pastel. Well, I don't know. It's 9 p.m. for me, but I think it translates the, the time based on where, <laughs> where you are in the world. Um, not converts the time. Yeah, that's 9 p.m. for me. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not going to calculate that. You just go on Discord, click on interest, and it will show the actual hour for your time. That's the magic of computers. They do stuff for you. So how long since you've actually, like, computer do maybe too much for us? How long since you've divided, you know, with a piece of paper or just with your head? How long since you've last, you know, did some normal, you know, math that you used to know when you were in like, I don't, know, I don't know, in school, but you barely use anymore because the just using the calculator on your phone is just so convenient. And you almost never use the the math that you were taught. Now, I'm sorry, I have to say that I'm <laughs> I'm guilty of the same, like a multiplication it's been so long like a big multiplication like and i do i do several like every week like every time i need to calculate a surface area or something like that i need to do a, a pretty uh you know a substantial multiplication pretty easy level you know it's just i don't do it with a piece of paper and a, and a pencil it's i do it with my my phone i'm guilty of the same stuff Ah, oh, man, and I was, I was not, I never was really bad at math. I was, I was very good at math, like, good, but like, top of the class level. But I, it always got so boring to me, never really got really interested. I was... I was not good at math because I liked math. I was good at math because I was good at class in general when I was in school. So 
math was, I just had to, you know, follow what the teachers said and do what they said. Generally, school is easy if you do just do that. Just listen and repeat. And I've always been very good at listening to instructions or just seeing things happening and replicating them, which is why I was able to teach myself painting and stuff like that. But, you know, math, like I'm not a natural with numbers and I'm, I'm very bad at, for example, at uh, mentally, calculating mentally. Um, I'm pretty bad at that. That's the fuzziness that radiation does to cameras. Ah, oh, that's that's interesting. Can you can you give me a, an example of that in the Discord? What you're what you're talking about, Cody? It sounds interesting. I want to I want to because what I wanted to do is work with mist and kind of smoke. So to unify like right now i'm still making all the separate parts but i wanted to find when everything is set up add some mist effects but now that you're talking about this kind of distortion it sounds awesome actually what i wanted to is to have some glow uh, due to the red light But yeah, sounds interesting. Hello, Daniel. Do you know how to work with acrylics? Like with the oils? Uh, no, I don't do that. So no. I know it's possible though. I know some people do that they kind of um, try to replicate oil effects with acrylics but it's not something that i'm proficient at so i will not um, dare to uh, say anything serious about that sorry It has different techniques, but you, I've seen people trying to, you know, they, they say, oh, look at this technique that will help you paint with acrylics like if it's oil. Sort of mimicking oil in a way with certain techniques. But it's not natural. It's like, can you cut a steak with a fork? And can you, can you stick it with your... Can you stick it with your knife? Sure. Like you can stick with the knife and cut with the fork. Is this the best thing to do? Uh, no, but you can. Right? So see the analogy? We're talking big brain here. Big brain analogy, high level. High level philosophy here. Yeah, it's not the same at all. But if you're really proficient at acrylics, you can almost imitate um, what makes oil uh, unique. Okay, yeah, well, whatever, link me to a video. Link me to a video. I'm interested. 
interested. Generally, I, I wait for the end to add all the effects. So I want all the figures to be um, to be in place. And almost like I do glazes and I'll add all the smoky effects, you know, the whenever I have um if I have, you know, flare effects, glow effects, all that good stuff that I love to do. And I'll generally do at the end, which is sometimes frustrating because that's why I, I love almost. Uh, this is what I love the most. This is my favorite part. <laughs> and yeah, I kind of force myself to do them at the end because oh, it's not worth making them too early because. because it might not be what you want in the end. So yeah, I've tried it. It's, it was mostly a waste of time. So all the effects, fancy effects come at the end. Oh, thank you, Carson. I do my best. I do my best. I don't know about that, but hey, I, I'll take it. I'll take it. Thanks. I've worked an insane amount of that, you can say. Not necessarily on this one, but like in general. It beats talent any time of the year. Like how many times have you heard about this kid wasting talent, wasting his potential? Like talent is just uh, a potential. But putting it into existence and making it a reality, something else. Oh man, I have to... I would need to go there. But there is my computer right here in... My computer is in the way. I have to push you guys. Sorry. Because I need to be here, because I want to follow the movement. My, my hand really needs to go, or maybe I should do that. I'm going to climb on this, and I'll have a better reach. <laughs> and you'll probably not see what I'm doing here, it's just... I'm, um, I was just trying to get, Command. you know, the, Studio the, cam good, for 10 the seconds. good fluid gesture. Sorry, I was doing this. <coughs> oh, I'm stuck. <laughs> oh my god. This is epic. Back What's happening is epic. I was just trying to go like that and, you know, have the right movement. The, because there is a slight angle because I need to follow the perspective. So you can go like that, but I, I couldn't reach. Sometimes you want to just put your arms in weird positions just so that it, it can, you know, swipe cleanly with just one single stroke or, you know, two or three, but
I'm doing a little dance, yeah. I'm thinking about converting into being a, a Twitch Twitch streamer, you know, showing very revealing pauses for the camera for donations. Really thought about it. So I'm kind of uh, experimenting with uh, showing you body parts that you're not supposed to see. <laughs> Have you seen what the new Twitch meta right now? It's like they're taking a, a camera. They, they are sitting on a transparent chair and they have like these girls, Twitch girls. Uh, they, they show the camera from behind the transparent chair. Yeah, that's happening. So. Classic back of my head, yeah. That's my very special camera angle. Still, uh, still, still looking for sponsors. Screenshot taken in the Discord. Still looking for sponsors willing to, um, <laughs> willing to sponsor the back of my head. Oh my God, this one. Oh, 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 I'm fearing something. Cody, don't do it. Don't do it, I'm not ready. Cody. Cody, please. I I beg you, please don't do it. I know, I know, I know what you're preparing. <laughs> please, spare me. Spare me. My my keyboard is out of reach. I I can't go there. It's Oh my god. It's torturing me right now. Because I know I know it's going to it's going to happen. It's like taxes. It, it has to happen. Taxes and death and emoji wall. Don't encourage him, people. Don't encourage him. Hi, Jeff. Like if if new people are coming in, they will probably understand nothing you have to explain afterwards though you know that you have to explain what we're all about after people experience this like Jeff and, and all the rest
Make Jeff on the outside of the machine. <laughs> nice. Okay, Daniel, is that a question? What, what's your question? But yeah, definitely it has, um, like anything, anything I do, it has Caravaggio. Um, not saying reference, but inspiration. Warning, emoji wall starts in 10, 9, 8, oh 7, God. 6, 5, oh 4, 3, 2, 1, go. Emoji wall unlocked. Screenshot right, this is the Discord. Seriously, we starting. need to break YouTube with emojis. Thanks, Cody. We have one minute. Let's go chat. We if I hurt it. my fingers, spamming emoji, you'll have to pay for this search, uh, right? Spam emojis. Like we look at that, my screen. finger's hurting already, no like I'm spamming so much. I'm serious. Okay, 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 let's spam, let's spam. Now before the timer runs out. Hurry up. Oh my god. Quick. Let's How go come chat. the emoji wall is not centered? Oh my god. We have to spam emojis okay, in chat here. now before the timer runs out. No time to waste. I'm serious. Hurry up. Quick. Let's go chat. Let's ah, go chat. Good. Better, go better, chat. better. Let's go chat. I need to do something about the frame with vertical. The emoji wall doesn't work as well with vertical. It ends in five, four, three, I have to fix it. Two, Let's go. One. Stop. Ah. Oh. Emoji cooldown. I don't know if this responsibility is good for you, Cody. You have too much power. Way too much. So that was Emoji Wall, everybody. Well, <laughs> welcome here. Welcome to the stream. This is this is what we do. Yes, this is just what we do. We spam emojis for no reason. We spam emojis for just for fun. That's called Emoji Wall. That's what you just witnessed. But don't. Don't judge us, don't like, we are still good people. Don't, don't worry, we, we, we don't bite. We may sound crazy, but we, we, we are very nice. Though. <sighs> you run across the house, like what if people what if someone hurts their legs? Or what if, you know, like people can get seriously injured during Emoji Wall because this is such, such chaos, just havoc. And, and you know, think about the, the numbers of, uh, the number of fractured hands that can happen due to uh, too much you know, hype due to emoji wall. Have you thought about that? Have you thought about what it can cost the medical system, Cody? Have you? Could be dangerous, yeah. This could harm people, like forget about, you know, the, the drug war and stuff like that, like 
Emoji wall is an addiction, first of all. And, you know, like people can get seriously injured. <laughs> like, you can break a finger. Think about that. Like, some people like gambling. Some people, you know, like emoji wall. It's the same kind of, uh, same kind of evil. <laughs> oh my god. I'm just kidding though, but hey, emoji was fun. Might deactivate it at some point. Because, um, for, for your own good. And think that when I first set it up, when I first set up the emoji wall, it didn't have a it didn't have a limit to mods only. And fortunately, nobody really abused the power back then. People were maybe too shy when I first implemented it. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that. Uh, it would be uh, would be insane if uh, if it was open to everybody. Uh, yeah, chat would be out of control, especially especially without cooldown. Like right now, there's a cooldown, so even the mods can't, you know, you, you can't do anything about the cooldown. The cooldown is cooldown, but. Hello, Mimi, have you anything else to say? If you want to talk, just talk like a normal person. I'm thinking that your power is just like the force, Cody. I don't want it to go to the dark side. See what I mean? You have great potential, young Jedi, but don't let the dark side get into your heart. You know? <laughs> Use your your powers for the good of the people. Thank you. Uh, I've had, I have spent a lot of time already on this one. Um, I started it last year in the summer, I think. So it was really a long time, like nine months. But I haven't been working on it for uh, a huge hi. I had a huge hiatus where I um, I didn't work on it. So I'm I'm thinking back again after some time. I have like changed stuff here. This big uh, blue area here. It's covering. There was another character here and all here there was other there were other stuff i've like everything that's kind of blue like that and blue like that i've covered it this part is unfinished so yeah i'm um it took me way more time than normal but i had uh you know other projects coming up and sometimes you get stuck on a painting yeah, I do. I do uh, have a multiple projects. Normally, I do that pretty uh, pretty easily. I when I get a little bit stuck or I have drawing time to wait for, I'll switch to a different project. So I have always have like several projects at the same time. Uh, recently, I've been kind of stuck. I've been kind of in a rut with this one and with others though. So uh, I had. 
it, it stayed on the side for more time than than what I wish. But nothing really that I can do. Yeah, I do sell my work. Yeah, I don't sell uh, online directly though. I use a, a bunch of everything. I use Michael Harding, Winsor Newton. I use uh, Rembrandt, Talents Rembrandt. A bit of all that's available to me. No, not mostly Rembrandt though. Um, some Rembrandts. It's for each pigment. I have my, you know, my faves. depends like each pigment i've most of the pigments that i use i've tried from multiple brands and over the years you know i've i got to decide and, and yeah over the years i I've, I've come to have my preferences based on my style really so this paint is more transparent this paint is more opaque and I, I want certain qualities certain qualities from the paint and it might matter for me but you might not you might not look for the same properties in the paint depending on how you work though so for example, if you almost never do glazes, what do you care about transparent paint? You want only opaque. And that's not my case. I like some opaque, I like some transparent. But yeah, so that's that's what um, that's what there is to uh, learn from. Moral of the story is get a bunch of, of paints. If you go to an art club, just ask all of your art friends, colleagues, if you can borrow them, borrow from them a, a bit of their paints if they use a different brand from you. Uh, just a ask for a little, little ounce of, of their paints, just to try it out, see how it works compared to yours. Just, you can also say, hey, I'll give you some of mine, you give me some of yours. Sharing, paints, uh, that, that can be cool. And, um, and this way you can, you don't have to buy all of these different brands to, to make you, to have an idea of how it feels. Uh, actually, that's what I did when I was working on my when I was working on my uh, cutter course. I had so many paint tubes to review, so I asked uh, around everybody that I know, my painter's friends. Um, and I asked um, if I could borrow uh, some paint tubes. Like a lot of people have old paint tubes left over. Uh, some, some um, people just get usually one art class and then they give up. So they have this old paint tubes. Like a lot of people are in this case. Not a lot, but you know, you know what I mean. You can find it; it's, it's around.
more expensive? N yeah, generally it's just the cost of materials. So mythology is winning, huh? That's nice. Actually, we can make a, a mythology special next time, like just just checking out painting that are about mythology. Because there is just so much artwork to to review in this category. Typical duration would be uh, three weeks to a month, something like that. Depends. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes we have a lot of um, of people who want to participate and not enough time, so we'll, we'll add some extra time. But like, you can still participate in any of the old challenges. Yeah, normally it's any medium. But we're mostly a painting community, so most people gravitate towards painting, I would say. A lot of people also make drawings, some uh, digital. Digital is also allowed. However, does it have to be Greek mythology or can it be, you know, uh, Scandinavian, Scandinavian stuff like that? Anything, any like uh, Chinese mythology. Egyptian, yeah. We we haven't spec specified though, so I'm not sure what you think. What what do you all guys think? Should we make it just Greek mythology or just any mythology? The only thing is, you'll have to if you make any mythology. You'll have to, when you submit your art, you have to refer to, you know, either write the story or refer to a link that explains the story. Viking mythology is really cool. There is a... Um, there's tons of interesting stuff with Odin and Thor and all the Viking gods. Many interesting Many interesting stuff. Uh, yeah, Ella, I have uh, text to speech. With the 
One of my favorite myths. I think I deserve a raise for all the hard work that I do every day. It's not Hello, easy Steven. being the default Microsoft text to speech voice. I don't know if you deserve a raise, really, Steven, because you haven't talked that much in a while. Uh, one of my favorite myths, you can check it out, is Fenrir. The, the god, the, or no, Fenrir is not a god, but he's a wolf like giant. I think Fenrir is, is one of the giants. And the gods fight against the giants. It's just. And. Um, Fenrir, this. This is uh, painting a giant wolf eating the man of a god. Like a super badass god with a beard and, you know, weapons and all. Like, there is um, potential here. Yeah, there is just so, there is just so much stuff. So much stuff to take inspiration from. That's, that's what's cool about this theme. Oh yeah, Native American, there's tons of cool, cool myth here. Uh, Pre-Columbian America also, like Pre-Columbian South America, they also have like some crazy mythology, like every culture has crazy mythology. Uh, so, it won't be a... Uh, Command. Zooming in for 10 seconds. You will not be missing... Missing on inspiration, that's for sure. Zooming out. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely we can do two or three. That's why I wanted to make sure that we we are set on the idea of making just this, maybe do only Greek mythology. This way we can have more challenges with all the others. But I guess it's better if we let people decide, it's still better. But this is why I kind of have I kind of had this kind of intuition that hey maybe we should restrict it because there's just so much stuff. But in a way it's good that it's so like full of full of ideas, like that's what you want. So yeah, let's keep it like that. Like any mythology. But yeah, definitely there could be um so much uh, so much stuff. It's like, also, do you, do you count fairy tales in mythology? What do you really count as, as mythology? Does it have to do anything with the gods of, like a, of a past culture or not? I would say yes, technically. 
mythology is like more uh, ancient gods, relates more to ancient gods or ancient divinities. Yeah, for example, King Arthur is mythology or not? Um, yeah, not quite sure. It's, it's tricky though, because every kind of story is part of mythology. And if you really, if you know anything about Carl Jung, for example, you know that it's all relating to each other. And uh, yeah, it's all part of the same sort of archetypal matrix that's basically a reflection of how our brain is wired our brain is wired so that we make stories a certain way and that's why most of the stories have stuff in common one of the most interesting myths is the one of Gilgamesh if you don't know anything about um, if you're interested in, in storytelling mythology and all, check out the myth of Gilgamesh, which is the the very first recorded story that we have of, of mankind. The very first, like Gilgamesh, super like it's the the oldest written story that we have, like the surviving story, full complete story that we have. And it's insane how many similarities there are with other stories from other civilizations that were thousands of kilometers away. Yeah, it's a problem. Like, defining mythology is definitely a problem. But hey, let, let's, let's use whatever you want, right? Let's not put limits on this. But yeah, defining mythology is tricky. Definitely tricky. Hey, man, you have to use earphones. You have to use text to speech in your earphones because how can you paint if you always have to look away? How can you paint if you don't have a if you don't have this like would be super annoying to always move my head to read out super distracting or I'll do like most um, most people which is not interact with every comment well I try to interact with as many comments that I want that I can it's like having a conversation Just realized I need to update the list of the comments. It's not accurate or vertical. Hello, Nicole. Well, wow, thanks. Uh, take it as a compliment, Cody.
Um, I think, yeah, I had my top five. The Caravaggio, number one. Um, Waterhouse, number... Well, in no specific order, next. Uh, Caravaggio... Yeah, yeah, I do have my top five somewhere. I, I remember, or maybe it was from back then. This conversation happened at some point for sure. So, uh, yeah, Caravaggio number one, no contest. And then in no specific order, what a house. I think I said Da Vinci. Then maybe um, Gustave Moreau. Then, um, then man is tough. I don't remember, and and I I I don't want to 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 pick and choose right now, but yeah. No, I, I don't. I don't think I said it in in this uh, in this stream. I think I've said it like a while ago, Nicole. It's not not recent. Not recent, definitely. So don't don't go ahead and scroll back. You you will not. You will not uh, find anything. It's mostly something that I think I discussed uh, a couple maybe years ago. Maybe Vermeer would be in my top five. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I, I thought you, we were talking about the top five. Top five thingy. Okay, my bad. See, sometimes the only problem with... Uh, the text-to-speech, which is cool, you know, don't get me wrong. It's sometimes, obviously, it's talking while I'm speaking. And sometimes when you listen to me, like, pausing, it's because I have, like, text ringing out in my ears at the same time. It's distracting uh, sometimes, yeah. So the poll, the poll is done, I guess. And yeah, we have a clear winner. Mythology is the winner. Good choice, everybody. Good choice. I like it. So congrats, Cody, on, on having a winning choice. Again, I think we already had one of your choices, one of your suggestions. More power. Oh, man. You're getting... Getting drunk with power. Don't... Don't... Don't let the dark side overtake you. Yeah, rocks and toes. What is that about, Felicia? So, he, he, what was the idea? You take some photos of your toes? I didn't understand the question about contemporary.
Oh, because they are hard. Because if you, if you uh, paint is something like that, like imagine this is kind of like a robot. You have to really think about parts. And, and because they usually have symmetry, they don't have natural rounded shapes like what you have in nature. They have mostly straight edges. Um, the perspective is much more tricky to paint them on because they they, they follow the perspective like a, a sh like a yeah because for example here I have some I have a perspective to follow my my barrel is slightly angled there is perspective so all the rings of this kind of cylindrical shape all have to follow perspective so this the the top rings actually my horizon line is almost here so the top rings are bent this way and the bottom rings are bent this way here for example the this central area here with the sort of the um the, the the side of the little frame here it's not centered because if it was centered it would be immediately here all right so it's slightly off center so this has to curve outside and follow a perspective that i'm not really sure about i'll i'll do you know i'll do something about this and and i'll see i'll I'll see when it's on the canvas if it works or not, but I'm probably not gonna get it first try. Sometimes it's tricky like that. So this this part, due to the perspective, is slightly wider visually than this one. This is what makes it tricky. Especially here, for example, I have sharp edges, so I need a lot of flats. My flats are starting to... to get tired. And they're not as flat as they used to be, which makes my... makes my life more difficult. Would you, would you watch a hot tub stream? Is that what you want? Don't tempt me. Just give me a, make me a donation to purchase a hot tub and yeah, let's warm it up. Sounds like an idea. I would love to have this just be in a hot tub. And you guys make donations. Sounds like a plan. If you ask me. Hello, Emilia. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing today?
Well, I'm using a bunch of references, yeah. Using a bunch of references. I said I use... Um, sometimes I use myself as a model, I, I pose, I change the faces. Sometimes I use actual models, sometimes I use even... Uh, sometimes I might use AI to get references of, of objects. Uh, actually, I took inspiration from an AI image to make this sort of big machine. Took some inspiration from, you know, textures from multiple sources to get metallic, this metallic uh, sci-fi feeling. But mostly, my my way of painting is sort of like a a big big Photoshop of sorts, but manual Photoshop without a computer. I do sometimes use Photoshop, but I'm not proficient at all at Photoshop itself. Mostly, what I do whenever I'm using this. I don't have actual Photoshop though, even though I could, but using the, um, a free version though of Photoshop. And what I do is mostly I stick the pictures together very poorly. So I'll stick one picture of a lady here, then one picture of a big machine here in the middle, then one picture of this here, and I'll make everything from there as I go. Sort of recompose. Um, no, I have, I'm not set on the, the name of this painting. I set several, several titles, but the, the ideas might still change. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you should thank me because like my process is pretty weird, but it's, it's pretty hard to pretty hard to explain. And it's it's hard for me to even really understand, which is why I get stuck so many times. Uh, and, and I get stuck and I don't know why, which is just a, a proof that I'm not exactly sure what's happening. Sometimes I I have inspiration, I say, oh, let's go, let's go. And sometimes I have huge doubts and I, I I'm get completely stuck. So my method is not fail proof, definitely. And uh, it's not guaranteed. Sometimes it works, sometimes not at all. comes and goes mostly in waves <laughs> yeah well, th that's the thing though, it doesn't always work for me. Sometimes it doesn't even work for me. And um, I don't know if you were there when I said to somebody that I had to put this picture on the side, this painting here, I had to put it on the side for so long, for a, uh, almost six months because I couldn't um, continue. It was stuck in a in limbo, in almost. I didn't know how to how to move on with it. Was completely stuck. Now I'm picking it again uh, because something changed in my brain. I don't know. Don't know what changed exactly. But um, now I feel better working on it.
Hello, Christoph. How are you doing? So yeah, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, but mostly I'm See you, Aurelia. Thanks. All right. Bon appétit, Nicole. Nice. Sounds like a plan. All right. You have a good evening then. hours in I think I'm gonna try to push it to three but I'm gonna need a break for it from my earphones I would like to make three hours because I I didn't have time to paint today, so uh, I didn't push this painting very much. And I feel like, I really feel like it's a crucial, crucial moment. Now it's time to push it. This one, like, because it, I got stuck on this one for so long. Now I'm finally getting in, into it. So it's time to push it. You know, this song, push it to the limits. So, I should really make a three hour session at least. For today. And, and it's going to it will not make a huge difference in terms of surface, like surface covered. Like what did I have before? I was, I filled up this entire part here, all the way up to here. All this bottom, this bottom ring. Okay. If I push it to ne the next hour, maybe I can fill this all up, all the way there. It takes time though. Because I'm trying to get into the intricate details and... So, I I'll still have a next phase where I, I still do more details like these, like tiny, you know tiny texture I still want to keep it I still want to push it until it feels like like actual metal texture and then I'll save all the embellishments for the end So this is the part of the, the machine where everything starts to have more, um, it start, there starts to have wires all over the place. So it will feel, now it will feel slightly more organic. 
but still man-made wires compared to what you get from plants are much more um there is much more preci precision and the shapes are very very even and regular so it's always a pain to do like cables it's a pain because it has to be as thick exactly the same thickness on the entire length and sometimes it's annoying to do that you don't have to do that with plants actual you know roots the 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 the, 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 thick, the sorry the thickness varies but with this the thickness is just so even it makes it hard oh yeah my mole stick is look at this hello it, it's resting on top of the frame this one is my mole stick for the very big easel and voila it's very easy it's i could do that or I could do what was Brooke Brooke's technique again? She was doing this. Was she doing this? The the the, the pinky tip? Or is she doing this? Don't remember exactly. Yeah, can't do it. Two hands, all right. She she showed me the technique, but man, it's something, really. I admire it. Like I, I could never do that. And oh yeah, the wrist with the other hand. Yeah, that's what I think. And she was also using the side. She was have. She was near the side, the the edge. So she was sometimes resting on the. Like the edge of the, the canvas. Oh, yeah. Oh, I can't do that. I know that sometimes my mouse stick is annoying. It's always in the way and all. But, man. I, I what One thing that I really don't like is this. And I don't know why. So, I think I never got into this technique. First of all, because it doesn't, it doesn't work for me. Uh, making a lot of videos. And when I speed up the videos, if I do that and you speed up the footage, like every time I put my hand on that, if the, the, if the canvas is, is a little bit wobbly and it has too much spring like that, when you speed up the process, it makes this vibrating effect, which is very distracting. So I think I first, when I first started recording videos of my paintings, I, I tried intentionally to avoid it for this reason, just like I don't use natural, uh, natural daylight because um, uh, when you use natural daylight and you speed up the footage, it makes for a very uneven video because it like the light goes up and down and up and down and up and down all the time very very uneven so yeah i guess i guess this is kind of the same thing with putting my hand on the canvas and afterwards it's also because i work on multiple parts right now i'm i'm very much trying to work from top to bottom follow this except here I'm doing this later because this is more my focus area I'm, I'm gonna focus on that much more intensely I don't do it right now live uh, but I'm trying to go from top to bottom trying to cover everything 
but it doesn't always happen. Sometimes I have, you know, a, an unfinished part here and I work here and like I have paint all over the place. I don't work from top to bottom all the time. Like right now, it's kind of exceptional. Which means that I never really know where the paint is wet. <laughs> and and I never really like the idea of putting, even if the paint is touched dry and all, and, and all good, and I can rest my hand on it. I, I hate the idea of, um, of putting my hand on the paint. Oh yeah, in this case, uh, in this case, definitely Nicholas, it's definitely going to help. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, and sometimes dry is... Sometimes dry is very relative. You, you think that it's dry, but hey, it's like meh, it's just tacky. In the final, um, the, the final idea, the, I'll have more, there's going to be more color and the lights here. For now, I'm just included, I'm, I'm just including some little orange dots, but I think I'm gonna bring more in the end, I don't know. This is more mostly details because, well, you know, it's all made up, so. Well, thanks. You, you keep up painting. That's awesome. I'm, I'm super happy. Super happy that I helped you paint and that's, uh, that's cool. What, what are you making? What kind of, what kind of paintings? No, no, not with paint thinner. What I have is, I'm gonna show you. Uh, what I have is this, look, I'm just uh, wiping it off. And and that's, that's what I do. Between, between, uh, before switching color. And simply wiping it up. Hey, welcome back, man. Chinese food. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um. debate though 
the oil will technically not clean the brush so if you really want to clean it's a paint thinner you can you can keep your brushes in good condition without using solvents and that's a trick that i recommend but like at the end of my session i clean i do an actual cleanup and then i put it in oil because it still it still requires cleanup so yeah No, it's not technically cleaning, but you can, if you have a clean brush, you can maintain it in oil, but yeah, no, technically it won't clean. You can get rid of some of the paint, the old paint stuck in your brush with oil and then like, like severely like wiping it or scrubbing it with a rag but it's mostly the scrubbing and wiping that removes the paint from the brush not really the oil like take just take some oil and try to you know really really clean as well as you can and then take some solvent take, take some thinner and then try to see if there is still color in it and i can assure you that you'll still have some color left in the brush it might it might still be good enough so you can have satisfying results with oil as long as you let your brushes sit in the oil overnight um in this case yeah it might be enough and might keep your maintain your brushes in good condition if you want to take the pigments out of the brush out of the bristles at the end of your painting session and it's some thinner man it's like thinking hey you've painted with acrylics are you going to wash your brushes with water at the end or with acrylic medium? Or are you going to say, duh, I'm not going to paint with an acrylic medium. The, the acrylic medium is basically like glue. So it's going to stick in my brush if I, if I uh, clean with my, my binder, basically. Oh yeah. So what is oil to oil paint for oil painting then? And yeah, and if, yeah, exactly. If people really want to go solvent free, soap and water. What I like is to use the combination of, of uh, dish soap, like liquid soap first. So when the brush is very dirty and very full of, of paint left over, just use liquid soap first. So dish soap, very liquid very fluid it's going to really penetrate the bristles and then solid soap like marseille soap something like that or you know the master's soap like artist quality soap for brushes this will come like next and by using the liquid so like dishwasher soap 
or even laundry detergent <laughs> it works also like use it first and then use the masters as a sort of second cleanup it will save you a lot because the, the master soap is much more expensive so it will save you a ton uh, of, of tons of money on that and it will just so uh, the the so the the liquid soap will uh, get rid of the, you know the the first like the big blobs of paints and the liquid soap will the the solid soap will get rid of the remaining pigments that are really stuck in there but yeah overall it's uh Soap and water is definitely enough. Hey, see you, my friends. See you next time, Socrates. Have a good one. See you, Amelia. See you next time. Okay. That's good. I'm going slowly, 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 but see. Hey, sometimes you bash me for being a kind of slow, but here is. It's just a bit. There is too much intricacies to just uh, go ahead and be all sergeant about it. I just can't. I can't can't be just you know fluid and all with this kind of painting is. Especially because this this part of the painting is kind of my. The central element I really want to bring focus on this area and how do you bring focus in a painting well you make it more slightly more tight more polished and you are you make it you make it you know more detailed so that people naturally focus there all right see you Cody have a good one So yeah, that's the technique is, which is why it's kind of taking me a bit more time. Normally I, I would say I, I'm still a slow painter, but I don't go as slowly, but technically once I'm done with one area, I'm not going to go for a second coat. I'm just going to do a couple details here and there, but Unlike a portrait, for example, is not going to require several several steps. It's a sort of a one and done thing. Thank you, Susanna. Glad you like my art.
Well, it's pretty quiet now, chat. We're pretty quiet. I guess you all are doing other stuff. What are you doing right now? Painting, eating, doing homework, getting inspired. Cooking and watching, nice. So what's what's on the menu? Starting to feel hungry, which is not a good sign. It's almost midnight here. You should not be hungry. And generally I don't have night cravings, but you know. Like I, I never stack snack during the night. But sometimes working up late might make you hungry. Oh, stuff, great leaf, I love it. Sounds awesome. Man, I can't wait to have, um, to actually have grape leaves. Can you use any grape leaves? Because I have, I have um, vines in, in my yard. Uh, can you use any any leaves? Any vine leaves? I think I've tried already with um, at my my old place. Everywhere I go, everywhere I live, if I have a yard, I'll plant um, a vine. Not too big, right? Okay. So they don't have a specific type that's better for this. Any leaf would go. I, I'm not sure though. I, I, like, I guess my wife knows better. She's the one taking care of that. I mostly... I mostly take care of, um, you know, trimming and growing the the, the grapes, and, and she's uh, she's in charge of cooking. She she loves cooking. She loves cooking, especially uh, what we grow in the garden. So every time she's so happy. Oh, Last Supper, awesome. Well, how painting from imagination works is... Um, you take several references, put them together, create sort of a mishmash, or a sort of a montage, or a collage of stuff. Mental Photoshop, if you want. And and then you use your references individually. And in this case, I'm... In this case, I'm um, making it up mostly, but I'm using references. I've been using um, some... Some uh, various photos, even some AI references here and there compose a bit of everything you, you just take everything you can grab your 
your hands on and you try to bring the um, try to find in the reference what you're looking for so for example if it's texture try to find the right texture in a model and then recompose to create what you have in mind with the texture from your model now but here memory is not the same as imagination in your case so this is not we're not talking about the same stuff here if you if you, you can go for your your plan it's just i wouldn't consider it the same i'm not using memory at all for my i'm not I'm not using my um my memory at all for the, everything i do here Okay. Yeah, James Gurney's book, I also uh, strongly recommend it. That's quite a challenge, though, to paint from your from memory. But it might be something like almost hypnotic, in a way. I don't know. I picture it as you know, like you get inside of your brain and try to pull off as many images as you can. Sounds like such an amazing challenge. You let me know how it goes. This is really something I would like to do also. Sounds sounds really like um sounds like a nice challenge. Oh man, this is this is slow. Am I using oil? Yes, I am. Uh huh. Nice. I like the idea. Yeah, memory is a oh, yeah, memory is a big mystery. And to be fair, this. If there's no claim that this is 100% accurate, that's fine, like, good. It doesn't have to be. Most of our memories are not accurate. They are mostly made up. We make up most of what we remember. Based on what other people tell us. Stuff like that. Memory is strange. But exactly, that's exactly what makes it artistic. That's why uh, it works so well in books, for example, like people writing down their memories. It doesn't necessarily have to be accurate like you just want to be 
honest with yourself. Maybe you will you'll miss out a couple of things. Maybe it will not be accurate. But if you are genuine, if you are honest, if you're not trying to deceive or lie. Screenshot taken in the Discord. It will make what it's supposed to make, which is provide a vision. Maybe transformed, but it's how our, our brain works. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly, this is why also people are so easily manipulated because, yeah, memory unfortunately is not very reliable. But for art, it's almost the only place where it's, well, it's harmless. Even if you, if you get the wrong memories or if your memories are messed up, it's going to create something more artistically interesting probably and and will be very harmless like but in politics oh my god yeah <laughs> this is used against us most of the time in um like you know education memories put under so much pressure you like you have to memorize everything you know But in art, it's the only place where, you know, memories, whatever is... Alright, it's going to be cool no matter what. And this is why we love arts, artworks that are about memory. Because for it's the only place where memory can have its own free time. Like free roam, roaming range, like... It, Free to just do whatever. Be free for once. Don't have to memorize all this school stuff. It's mostly free expression in a way. Oh yeah, you bet. How many things do we have that were that we had to remember by heart and as soon as the test is gone, bam, it's, it's, it's gone. And art, on the other hand, is nobody ever asks you, is, is requiring that you remember any, you know, feeling by heart. You want to, you want to do it like voluntarily. Nobody forces you. That's the first one. That's cool. And you recollect it freely, which means that nobody is here to testify if it's real or not. As long as you, as you do it with honesty. It will work, artistically speaking. There is no right or wrong answer in memory with art.
and yeah and the fact that also that the memories vanish slowly and art is also a nice way to keep them alive that's also cool oh my god this machine is going to be the death of me Take time, but I will not give up. Not anymore. Okay. Hmm. I didn't realize, but it's going to be looking like a giant, you know. Skull helmet, robot skull helmet, in a way. A uh, ton done today? Nah, I had just this bottom part here, this ring, this outer ring. Not a ton, but some. More than usual, Felicia, definitely more. More than what I'm used to. I said that I'm gonna hit the three hour mark because yeah this is the the only session i'll have for the day so let's make it count normally um normally when i stream i have uh, several hours prior to streaming but in this case, I, I actually, I had to uh, prepare the room for the baby. So I have, uh, I was very busy at home. So I was actually, I was actually, um, my, I was not painting, but I was directing the operations my father-in-law was painting a nice white monochrome on the wall A very bold composition. Sorry for the sound, for the noise.
Let's try this. Some dance music. Uh huh. Um, I'm not sure where you can find that's copyright free, but I can change the playlist if you want. Let's see. Polka. <laughs> All right, how about that? Oh. Look at that. Tune out, maybe. Eh? You want to dance? Salut Jasmine Désolé, on met la musique à fond, hein. c'est la fin de session. Too loud well, Somebody asks for dance music. Sorry for um, sorry for your ears. Okay, let's bring it back to normal volume. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I get it. I get it. What? Am I saying that's so interesting though? Really? Uh, ce tableau il a été inspiré par le l'idée des Danaïdes, Jasmine. C'est comme ça qu'est venue la première inspiration. Alors je dis pas que c'est les Danaïdes, mais c'est une sorte de version moderne du tonneau des Danaïdes, voilà. avec d'autres. Euh... Il y a d'autres inventions de mon cru.
Oh, Cody. How about the Chinese then? Not arrived. Flowers were was last time, uh, last Friday. did take me a month. I think I first started it last June of 2023 so this tells you but I I, um, I gave it away for a couple months though the The this the the machine the entire machine I did yesterday only this entire but top part oops sorry uh, but the most of the the rest of the painting has been done like really I had a a love hate relation with relationship with this painting so. I abandoned it for six months, I think, then took it back. Yeah, the machine yesterday, but the rest has been painted before. Some of the parts have been painted before, some of the part recently. It's really messed up. Yeah, I tend to put a lot of paintings on this side and I never really give up. Sometimes I do though, sometimes I really like full on destroy the, the canvas or reuse it. And in this case, there is no hope for the painting. But it's generally paintings that I haven't invested a lot of time. It's like it was just a quick idea and then I realized very early on that it was not the right way but um, with a painting like that that's kind of more like my core project when it's a big project like that um, I never gave up really it's just I just need more time and yeah there might be a, a skill difference not a skill difference because my my skill level is pretty um, is pretty stable more it could be more a stylistic difference it's kind of a I might by waiting so much I might change my approach a bit change my vision a bit reconsider things and 
it's not necessarily a bad thing because sometimes the reason I'm stuck is because I'm I'm not going in the right direction so this uh, this kind of new stylistic approach might help Euh, bon, quand j'étais petit, ouais, la semaine des bandes dessinées, mais ça m'intéresse pas forcément tant que ça maintenant. Ouais, après, je sais, il y a beaucoup de gens qui aiment bien comparer mes peintures à du Enki Bilal ou des choses comme ça. Dans le, dans l'esprit. Thanks, Lucia. All right, three hour mark. I'm pretty right on spot. So I'm going to give you a little, a little tour of El Pentingo. So here it is. This is what I have so far. Yeah, normally, yeah, this this is exactly the, the spirit, it's, you get a different vision and that's why you, when I take such a huge break, it's generally because I, I need a slightly different vision. Here's the painting. So all this bottom part here, this background was done a while ago, last year. The third of this, this woman here was done recently. I've changed it up completely. This character is going to go and yeah, I'm going to focus on the machine because it's kind of the central part and to work on the, all the bottom part. And yeah, still a lot of work to do, but yeah, I'm hyped. I, I'm hyped for this one. Um, and yeah, I'm for, uh, it's been a while since I've last been hyped on this painting and I am right now. So really, uh, can't wait to, um, you know, it's, it's a good sign when you can't wait to be the next day to start again. So that's the state I'm in and I'm really happy that it's about this painting, uh, because yeah. I had a love-hate relationship with this one, so I'm happy that I fell in love again. So it happens, everybody. Never, never give up. Never give up on hope. It will always uh, get better at some point. My friends, I'll see you for the next one. Thank you very much for staying up three hours, man. We did it. We run the distance. You can be proud of yourself, my good friends. I'll see you for the next one. And until then, as always, Joy and inspiration to you.